Welcome back to What Are Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the M44 Tier 6 American SPG. It's on the south spawn of steps and it's under the command of Hawkeye 6121. Game's underway. 155mm howitzer mounted on top of a Walker Bulldog hull. Uh, and it's got a swivel which means that it's actually capable of pointing the gun over quite a wide arc, 30 degrees either side. And that's one of the things that makes the M44 so powerful. The other being the fact that it can reload very, very quickly. 16.51 seconds with 550 alpha and the ability to penetrate 39 millimeters of armor and has a burst radius of seven meters. Well, Hawkeye's gone up onto the little pocket at the back of the map behind the cap area. It's actually quite a useful spot. It, uh, a lot of players actually go over to the east corner of the map and you can see there's an RT over there already in this game. There's three RTs on each side. The problem with going over into that corner is it's very obvious and once you're there you're trapped. You also find it fairly difficult to shoot over to the west side of the map from the east side. It's not only a long distance to fire a shell over but it means your reaction time is lessened. The closer you are to your target, the easier it is to hit them. Okay, we lost sight of that T-3485M, which is a bit annoying, really, because there's three guys down there who could have spotted, and one of them just died to Jagdpanzer IV. The M44 killed him. In fact, there's four tanks down there. I didn't see that there was another one there. But we can see that Hawkeye's dialing in on a Hellcat, rounds out... Oh, it looks like there's an arty there as well. Oh, he killed the Hellcat with one round. And I think he saw the tracer and saw the bush it came from. Yep, there's definitely an arty down that corner of the map. No doubt about it. He fires one in. It goes into the ground, but I'm pretty sure there is an arty there. And we'll probably see a tracer coming out of that area very, very shortly when the arty fires the next time. Okay, we've got an M4A1. Fires around in his path. It was a little bit late, but it did do some damage, and it stunned the guy. Okay, he's lining up another shot. He will be ready momentarily. It's one of the great things about the M44, is that it's so quick to reload. Now we've got a Wolverine in that corner. Oh, there's the arty. It was a Leffy, actually. And he gets a direct hit on that guy for 270 right onto the engine bay, and he's dead. So that was the RT that was in that corner. Going for the Type T-34 is the next one. Seconds away from shooting. Rounds out. Here we go. Yeah, that's another kill. Now it's a 16.51 seconds reload, but you can actually decrease that by about a full second if you use premium consumables. Just need to add a crater Coca-Cola to the crew, and then you get great results. And it more than pays for itself in the amount of damage you can do, because if you speed up the reload as much as you can by one second a shot, that means over 15 shots you get a free shot, and that means an extra 500 hit points of damage, and that can be a lot of credits. Unfortunately, our team on the west side of the map has fallen, and now we're aiming for a T-67. Oh, the M44 is coming to sight. We'll go for that in preference. Rounds out on him. Long flight time for the shell, but it is a kill shot. Nice shot there. Three kills. We did see the T-67 up there, but we've lost sight of him now. Our team seems to have done very, very well on the east side of the map, but the enemy is coming in from the west side now, so maybe Hawkeye needs to relocate soon. He's 5-1 in blind where he thinks the T-67 was last seen. Okay, the enemy T-3485M who was threatening us has now been killed by our M41 HMC. Another shell goes in. I think he's more likely to be close to those bushes, actually. We'll know shortly, because if he is still there, he'll probably fire on the KV-2s, getting close. Okay, we've got a VK-3001P. 
which is now a heavy tank, used to be a medium. He's going to launch around into the rear of that guy. That was Klaus. Yep, it was a little short and it triggered our Klaus Kellerman clone. Almost ready to go again. Launches one in, rounds out, goes long. Way long, outside the rescue almost. That BK is using that rock for cover, but it's not going to help him if an RT round comes in. He's abandoned it now. He's going for the dip. I think that shell was a bit that too was bit too premature, but he actually was tracked. And that's what stopped him in his tracks. And uh, so the shell only splashed him a little. I'm now beginning to believe that the T67 is relocated altogether and he's not there at the back of the map. Or if he is, he's over the behind the far rock, not the nearer ones. And that's Horn's going up to have a quick look. Yeah, he could be anywhere in those bushes or he could have relocated altogether right down to this side of the map, coming down the west side. There's the T67. He was behind the rock. Rounds out, lands any second. That was fucking close! Yes, that was close. <laughs> yeah, true. Klaus laughs as well during these uh, moments. I don't think he realised the amount of effect that, that, uh, that those uh, short snippets was going to have. Of course, the thing is now, can we actually start a... Uh, an action to get a uh, proper mod that can actually have Klaus as the commander, just as Klaus has skills as the commander. He's got another kill! That's his fourth! He got the bishop! But now he has to hide behind the rock because the enemy is getting way too close. Jagdpanzer 4 and a Wizzy 131 GFT. There's only three enemies left, the other one being the T-67, or at least another T-67, because the one we saw behind the rock up in the north wasn't the one we saw earlier. So he is somewhere down here, and here's the Wizzy 131, and he fluffed that shot. He's backing up to use the rock for cover, but he will be able to reload momentarily, and the Wizzy 131's coming in to try and kill him. He's going to get one hell of a nasty shock if he gets hit by a 155. Yep, that's what happens. Don't try and charge an M44 from the front. If you do, if they're reloaded, you're dead. It will just overwhelm your tank. That was a huge mistake. Okay, staying here for the moment, waiting to see what the Jagdpanzer 4 or the T67 do. We're capping at the other end. We haven't seen the Jagdpanzer 4 yet, but he might try to come up from behind. Oh, no, he hasn't. He's gone up the other end to get a reset. Okay, now he needs to go into action, get his shot onto that guy. He's going to get the reset on the M10. In fact, actually, he kills the M10. But now, can we get a shot on him? Rounds out. Goes long. Well, in fact, it was a, a little... He didn't, he didn't get the um, lead enough on the target. And target's a long way away. You have to give a much, much greater lead. Both of our other RTs on the east side of the... Yeah, the east side of the map. And they're aiming towards the cap area. And the Nashorn's moving in. But he's got very low hit points. And we've been spotted by someone. It must be the T-67. And he came up behind us. Very cheeky. Now, he's being targeted by one of the RTs, but I'm pretty sure Hawkeye can do the same again and take this guy out. And if he does, he'll get a top gun. I think he wants the kill for himself, actually. Where are you, Mr. T-67? We have a 155mm present for you. Oh, there he is! Auto aim on. He takes one round. Oh, yes! Beautiful shot. That's the top gun. But he has to change position. He really needs to get north now to help his teammates. Because uh, I'm afraid the Nashorn did die. And that means the last remaining enemy is the Jagdpanzer 4. And it looks to me like he might be going after our fellow Artis. 
He's moved the position so the Jagdpanzer IV, if he does come south, is not going to see him. We don't know if the Jagdpanzer's decided to go down. No, he's there. He's still there. And he would have seen both parties. It looks to me like he's getting into a defensive position so he can shoot at them. Oh, kill shot! Splashed him to death. Seven kills for Hawkeye. What a great game. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats for this one. Oh, it's a first class tanker for Hawkeye 6121 in the M44. He got a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He managed to get 18. He got a Starks medal because he killed at least two enemy tanks. Uh, took at least two shots from the enemy and survived the battle. Having received damage at least equivalent to two thirds of his hit points. And he got a top gun for getting six kills. In fact, he ended up with seven. He was one short of getting a Radley's. But unfortunately, there just wasn't enough tanks left for him to kill. A win eight from that battle was 4,597. It was worth it just for seeing that shot on the T-67. The one that he actually, well, basically, he manually aimed it. Um, well, auto-aimed it. But it is beautiful because even at that distance, sometimes the shells don't go where you want them to go. But his one went straight to the target and took him out. And, well, that really helped his team because after that T-67 was gone, with the Jagdpanzer IV having very low hit points, it meant that they almost had it. They almost certainly had it. They just needed one more shell to get near the enemy and they won the battle and they did. So let's have a look at the team score. Oh, by the way, 45897 is a very high win 8 super unit come standard and a bit more. Let's have a look at team score. So the highest damage in the game was Hawkeye with 1,763 hit points of damage. Wasn't 20% of the enemy hit pulled. That's why he didn't get the high caliber on this occasion. But the next highest damage was, in fact, the Jagdpanzer IV with 1,391, followed by the Nashorn with 1,309. When it came to kills, yet nobody could touch Hawkeye. He got seven kills, five kills went to the Jagdpanzer IV, two kills to our Jagdpanzer IV, our M10 RBFM and our M41 HMC, and the enemy T67 and the enemy M44. When it came to base XP, it was Hawkeye again with 1,052. He was the only one to get over 1,000 base. 742 went to the M10 RBFM, 552 went to the other M10 RBFM, and he picked up a Confederate. Hawkeye fired 19 rounds in the game, got 4 direct hits, 1 penetration and 13 splash. Damage of 1,763 hit points, of which 1,371 were at more than 300 meters. I gather that the it may be one of the arties that he actually penetrated. Yes, it was the M44 that he actually penned in this instance. Um, I thought for a chance there might be a chance that he would pen the Wizzy 131 or the T67 because they've got fairly thin armor. But no, it was the RT because they've got virtually non-existent <laughs> armor and he did pen that guy. If we go through the rest of it, he received two hits from the enemy. Both were penetrations. Yes, the armor on the M44 is negligible, as I said. And so, yes, any of those shots were going to go through unless, of course, they hit the tracks. He damaged 11 of the enemy, killed 7, and did 219 hit points of damage assistance and 147 hit points of stun assist off 6 stuns. And he got 5 defense points when he reset the cap. That was the T67. He was sitting in the cap at the time when he killed him. 24,120 credits for the game on a freed play account. And after repair and ammunition resupply, still took away a profit of 12,608 credits. He got 1,052 base XP times 2 for the first victory on this occasion. 2,104 experience points altogether. A very good game by Hawkeye6121. Shows how good he is in the M44. I'm pretty sure if he carries on like this, we will be seeing Radley Walters winning medals. Uh, battles in this RT for Hawkeye because he certainly showed the competence to actually do it. If you enjoyed this replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. We've got another replay from Hawkeye coming up very shortly, so uh, do stick around for that. And thanks for watching.